Oh, whoa. That is very interesting. A long time ago, in what felt like another universe, I saw an AR headset called Magic Leap. Magic Leap 2, I just got the demo here in New York, and it was a whole different experience. So Magic Leap has made a complete pivot and went fully into the business territory. Now with the new CEO, Peggy Johnson, it is looking at verticals like defense and medicine. And I got to take a look at it in New York in a regular conference room where I put it on and went through a couple of demos. Now, here's the thing you need to know about Magic Leap and about AR headsets in general. There aren't that many of them. Now, right now, the, the big ones you wear on your head like helmets are the Magic Leap, Magic Leap 2, and Microsoft HoloLens 2. The Magic Leap 2, the, the design is a lot thinner and more compact than what the HoloLens 2 is but it also has this separate processor pack that you still have to wear on your hip. That's the same as the original Magic Leap. Plus, it also has this handheld controller, which is also similar in concept to what the original Magic Leap had. Although the Magic Leap 2 does have eye tracking and it does have hand tracking, I didn't get to demo all of that stuff. I really was looking at stuff that was about the display and about that controller. Now, when I looked at it in the conference room, there was some light coming in and there were a couple of demo stations where I trod on different headsets with different demos. This is early hardware that I looked at. The actual headset is supposed to debut later this year. Magic Leap is aiming to have this technology at some point filter down to everyday consumer AR glasses. That's something that we've heard from a lot of different companies. The idea of AR is still that it's going to be projected uh, with these waveguide displays. Um, so I see kind of these ghostly but vivid 3D effects in front of me. The one thing I noticed about Magic Leap 2 is that the field of view is much bigger. And it seems like the biggest field of view that I've ever seen on an AR headset. It's wider than what the original Magic Leap was, but it's also notably taller. It's hard to judge, but I'd say it was kind of feeling like a, more like a, like a small paperback book held in front of my face versus, you know, years ago, it felt more like a deck of playing cards. And that difference was really clear when I looked at a tabletop demo showing this kind of, you know, commander field view of a, of a forest fire type situation. I could see these mountains that were displaying on top of the table. I could see this fire situation that was popping up and there were these helicopters and I could point and get little readouts on things. But also on the wall behind me, there was a big monitor type display that transformed a, a bare wall into all these extra readouts. What I noticed is that glancing with my eyes, I could look up at those displays a lot more easily. I could get to the table and see a table, you know, that was, it was a pretty wide um, table um, at a distance that felt like only you know, a couple of feet, whereas opposed to I didn't have to back up any further than that. But here's the thing that's really crazy. The next demo I tried showed me something I've never seen before in AR. It's called segmented dimming, and basically the display is able to shutter down like a pair of sunglasses that can block out all the light in the room. Oh, whoa. That is very interesting. This is something that Magic Leap had talked about doing years ago, and I've heard about this, you know, the idea that AR glasses could become VR or that type of a thing. So this basically feels like it's dimming all the lights in the room, so that suddenly I could look at the AR stuff on the table and it felt like someone had turned all the lights down. I could still see some details of the lights through it, but it was really like I was wearing very dark sunglasses. What it made the effect feel like was that I was really focusing on the situation, almost like a museum exhibit, where suddenly the spotlight was what I, you know, was looking at what I was meant to be looking at. Magic Leap is intending this to also handle situations in bright sunlight a lot better and the aim is maybe so that if people like, you know, if you're working in medicine or training and you want to be able to focus, this really felt like it was narrowing the cone of focus a lot more towards what I was looking at. It was pretty intriguing. The other thing it can do is, is segment or, you know, focus that dimming effect in particular areas. So I stood with another demo and looked at this, you know, 3D watch, luxury watch that was floating like an AR effect in front of me. But, it was being matted out in the back by the segmented dimming, which meant that it was opaque. So, you know, when my videographer was walking behind it, 
I couldn't see him through the watch. That's really interesting too, because while there have been effects in AR that have allowed occlusion, which means that an AR thing can look like it's walking behind a real piece of furniture, I haven't seen anything where somebody walking behind the AR thing ends up being blocked out. And while I could see the dark edges of the matting kind of hovering around it, it seems like it would potentially be very useful for making out details without having to see things shine through it. it kind of removes the ghost effect. And Magic Leap also showed some spatial audio stuff with the headset, which showed the you know, effects of having multiple people talk to me, these, these virtual heads in a room, and how good the spatial audio was through the headset band of making the voices sound distinct. One thing that was interesting is that the demo used an audio cue to get my attention to a virtual object that was in the room. And Magic Leap believes that that's an important kind of, you know, way to draw your attention to something that's not there. It did seem like you'd be able to more easily multitask with that wider field of view display. There are cameras on this controller. So the idea is that it's not gonna lose focus and it doesn't use that type of um, magnetically based tracking that it did before. It's a, it's a different, you know, um, type of a tracking system. The aim is that it's going to be more reliable no matter where you aim it at. But it will also work with hand tracking. I just didn't try that. So I don't know how good that part is. Um, I think maybe the idea might be to work with other types of peripherals and accessories. Microsoft HoloLens 2 doesn't have any accessory, it just has hand tracking. But the problem with that might be precision, which you're trading off in exchange for the convenience of just being able to reach around. This is just uh, a, like a pointer and nothing in the philosophy of it has changed from the original Magic Leap. The little puck thing that I put on my belt or my, stuck in my pocket was big. It's, it's still this big chunky processor and it was making like a hissing, you know, it was making a hissing sound when I was using it, like a, like a venting sound. Um, there's an AMD processor on this that magically promises is much more powerful than the previous one and could vault above some of the other processors. Like the, the claim is that it's much more powerful even than the Qualcomm XR2, the Snapdragon XR2, which is on the Microsoft HoloLens 2 and is also on the Oculus Quest 2. That sounds interesting, but it's all a very self-contained system. It's not designed right now to connect with a phone. Um, there are promises that the apps being developed for Magic Leap 2 could be cross compatible, but we just don't know yet. One thing I didn't like about Magic Leap 2 that is the same as before is that it doesn't work with my glasses. The HoloLens 2 was a visor just flipped down over my glasses was really nice. I have big glasses and I have terrible vision. Now there are prescription inserts for the Magic Leap 2. And guess what? It turns out that they didn't have those during my demo that matched my prescription. Promises are that you could make a insert that would match my minus eight plus prescription, but I had to put in contact lenses. The trade-off for that is that the field of view can get larger the closer the glasses are to your face. So I think that's what Magic Leap was aiming for with that. But speaking of glasses, that's exactly where Magic Leap wants to go next, to make these things smaller, to eventually become something that you could outfit with a prescription and, and wear you know, maybe all the time, and maybe down the road, connect with phones. The future is uncertain. What I see right now is it's interesting that that segmented dimming technology popped up. I don't think it's the last time we're gonna see something like that because as these AR glasses aim to go outdoors, they're gonna have to figure out how to work better in bright sunlight and how to make those effects pop. Sitting through this demo, it's clearly a little better and it's clearly got some interesting features. I just don't know where the landscape is going, who's gonna be interested in adopting it and whether the software will be better. Magic Leap is looking to get more developers working on this platform. This is just a very early look at what is sure to be a continuing and interesting landscape for AR. Unlike VR, AR stuff really hasn't been defined yet. I haven't seen a great pair of AR glasses. If you have questions, any thoughts, please leave them below. I'm Scott Stein. Thanks for watching.